When is pasture grass the safest in warm weather for horses that are at higher risk of laminitis and colic? Depends on a lot of things. But first, a little science. Sunlight triggers a plant to start photosynthesis, which is the process by which plants use the UV energy from the sun to create energy that they store in their bodies in non-structural carbohydrates. That's where they keep all of their energy that they need to grow and to reproduce. And those sugar and starch levels can vary depending on a couple of things. One being how much sunshine there is. And in the warmer weather, there's going to be more hours of sunshine. So throughout the entire day, that plant is just collecting, collecting, and collecting those sugars and starches. So late afternoon, it's going to be higher sugar and starch for pasture. Now, about three hours after sunset or so, those plants decide my belly is full, I'm gonna start using that energy and I'm gonna grow overnight and get ready to reproduce and go to seed. Plants are pretty intuitive and they know that when they're under stress, they need to start gathering those energy reserves for later use. It's kind of like a survival mechanism. And there's some instances when the grass is gonna be stressed that we want to be aware of when we're turning our horses out. One of them is after a mow because you are literally chopping that growth in half and then the plant says, uh-oh, I gotta keep growing. Usually about 24 hours after a mow, it's gonna be a lot safer to turn your horses out. If you have a lot of excess water coming from the sky or if there's a drought condition going on, that's also going to stress the grass. The height of the grass also makes a difference. Sugars and starches tend to be concentrated in the bottom three to four inches of the plant, which means that horses find that part the most delicious, which typically means that's where they're gonna eat if they can get to it. And then the plant's really gonna be stressed because they've not only been chopped, they've also lost all of their reserves. That's why overgrazing in a pasture can create increased sugar levels. Now, pastures that have really, really tall grass is getting ready to go to seed. They're hoarding all of that energy for the reproductive cycle. And so ideally, when we're taking care of our pastures, we wanna be looking for that like mid height, you know, taller than four inches and then shorter than going to seed. Obviously, we all do the best we can with what we have for our horses, but when we have a, ho a horse that is at a higher risk of laminitis and they go out on pasture, which is great for their brains and their bodies, you can make things a little bit safer. One, by altering when you turn them out and two, is to use grazing muzzles. These muzzles are just wearable hay nets and they do two things for your horse. One is they reduce the volume that your horse is eating. And the second thing is they slow everything down so that their hindgut isn't getting inundated with a large amount of sugars and starches, which can trigger those laminitic and colic episodes. And it's also nice to remember that pasture is part of your horse's diet and any drastic changes to their pasture schedule or the type of pasture, maybe you're switching lots to rest one, that is considered a diet change and should be made nice and slow. And yes, this includes even young horses. Sometimes in the spring, that green grass comes on really suddenly and it helps everybody to slowly acclimate to that new diet. And in the fall, pasture grasses know that there's a big change coming up and they need to collect all those sugars and starches to survive the winter. So those levels are gonna go up in the fall. They're gonna go up really high in the fall when the overnight temperatures are 40 degrees or below or when the frosty layer has covered your pastures. So be cognizant of those times and adjust accordingly to when your high-risk horse goes out to graze.